Guys, I have to apologize. Um, the video you guys are watching right now was intended to go up a while back. Aaron Frederick sent me a video clip that I wanted to put in and I proceeded to store that all away and then I got busy making knives. I had an order come in. So the video you're about to see, I know I'm about to tell you that I'm about to tell you that it's, it's you know, heavy content. I put two videos up. I shot this Thursday last week. Apologize. Been really busy. I know I've done a couple live feeds up here at the shop. I'm editing this. I should put this up tonight or first thing tomorrow. Uh, I've been at the shop till 8 or 9 o'clock, two nights in a row now. It's almost 7 now, uh, 7 p.m. So if you guys watch my live feeds, you know I was up here late. Last night, I'm up here late again tonight because I have an order for, for nine knives and I want to get them done and I need to get caught up on some of this stuff, but I'm not working this weekend. So that's why I'm pushing through to get some of this stuff done. And I had stuff sharpen, show up for sharpening. So tomorrow I'm going to sharpen, try and get caught up on sharpening and then be back up here Thursday to, to do some sharpening or to do some knife making. So I got a specific order and I'm doing some testing on the ceramics. So apologize if it took this long to get this video on. Well, as you guys have seen, it's been a content heavy week for me on YouTube. I know this is bouncy, I'm walking the dog. The video I'm currently, the one you're getting watching right now is a video about the Aaron Frederick Smatch It. Yeah. So I hope you guys enjoy it. This is my intro. Uh, I had to take a dog for a walk. I posted up two videos today. Uh, one of them was one I shot edited uh, a couple days ago, but I finished the editing last night. That was the uh, KME video. Um, I put up a video about, if by the time you're watching this, it's already posted. Uh, I did another career that starts at 5 p.m. today, which it's already passed, um, which was the uh, custom SMF. So I hope you guys are enjoying the content. I like some of the new features that uh, that YouTube is rolled out. Uh, I do have to say though that with those premieres, I apologize, it does not come up in full HD until after it's been up. So it's basically, it's still in a rendering. And uh, the one that is po that posted up, if you guys watched it, it probably didn't have music. If I remember right, it, uh, it takes a while for the music to change. So I was putting in music on the, on the intro, so. All right, guys. So, like I said, if you need sharpening, email me. It's in the it's in the comments below, in the uh, description. Sorry about that, guys. Drinking a beer. So, we are here to get this at a good angle. First of all, there we go. Like I said. I am in the, currently in the process of fixing my tripod. One of the pins that holds the legs up came out. And so when you set it up, it just falls over. So we're doing this in the house, stuff like that. It's, it's not optimal, I know, but I wanna get this stuff done. So as you know, from what you already saw, because I know that I'm going to film an intro a little bit later, we are talking about the Aaron Frederick Smatch It. Now I got this at um, the Vegas Custom Show. This is a piece of metal, guys. This thing, it's gorgeous. And the whole thing is, it's period accurate. Uh, the Smatchet was a World War II weapon uh, designed for close quarters combat. It is, I mean, it's just a great big dagger. It was uh, designed by Fairbane. Um, I'll get some more information on it, put it up, but this one, as opposed to the one he had on his table, which was just, um, I forget what steel it was. This one has been differentially hardened. It has a true hormone, zirconium bolster, and lightning strike carbon fiber handles across this gorgeous piece of metal. So this is 1095 steel, and it, it's sharp. I, I would not sharpen this. This is the edge. It's not one of the hair splitting edges that I usually have, but this is the kind of edge you want on a weapon like this. And this is a weapon. This is designed for chopping, stabbing, and it was designed by Fairbane as a weapon. So, 1095 steel with a true hormone. It is, uh, it's got, it, I got a stain on it that I got to clean up a little bit. It's, it's high carbon steel, um, little fingerprint. Uh, I haven't oiled it for a couple days, but it just needs wiped off. 
This thing is balanced so well. Aaron Frederick, who uh, was also a gunner's mate in the Navy, made this. Frederick Knives, Trash Panda Knives, you guys probably know him. You've heard him on the, on the Knife Nuts podcast. He made this for the show, and I was able to pick it up. So um, what you've got is this huge chopping multi-purpose tool in a steel that's meant for that. You got a nice hard edge at the front. Nice hard edge at the front here because you have that true hamon. And then a softer middle, which allows it to, to do striking, be hard at the edge, but still have some flex, just like a Japanese sword. Uh, it's double edged. It is hollow ground and it is, man, guys, it is, that, that hamon is, it doesn't come through on video as well as it does in the pictures. Um, like I said, zirconium bolster, removable hardware. Uh, it is a truly incredible piece to try to do a hollow grind on something like this. That's, that's hard to do a hollow grind on a double edge like that and keep it good and even. It's hard to do. Um, nice big leaf shape, but there you can see the hamon real clearly. So got this from Aaron. I talked to Aaron for a while. He made this, uh, this was his take on the, the smatch it that, uh, Fairbane designed. Uh, like I said, he tried to do everything period accurate. So it has got some darkening the blade. He blackened the blade. You've got some minor inconsistencies from heat treat and things like that he left on, which add to the beauty of this and make it look older than it truly is. Period accurate sheath where, like he said in the, in the video, he didn't do the sheath. He's got a guy that did. He's like, a whole knife would look better if, if somebody else just done it. You know, it would have been perfect if somebody else had done it. So I like this. This would be something that an outdoors guy, like if you were out in the woods and you were chopping through, this reminds me, this is along the same lines of that great big, um, I can't think of it. The great big knife that I had before that, that was made for that was out of 3V and stuff like that. Same kind of deal. This is something you could take out in the woods and just beat the shit out of, and it's going to come back, and it's just going to be fine. Um, it's not super, super thick. You would think, looking at it, that it looks really thick. He didn't get any warp in this. Perfectly straight. No warp in that. Why is that look like that? Oh, guys, you're falling down. So, um, let's get you here. Let's get you here and lined up. There we go. So, I don't know what's causing that. You see that right here, guys? I don't know what's causing that. So, like I said, it is something that is going to just take a beating, and it's just going to, as it ages, it's going to look better. It will look better. So, um, so I'm going to pause here, and we're going to talk about the smatch it. I might bring you along and we'll figure out like the actual design about the smatch it. And I'm hoping that Aaron possibly can send me a, a file that I can drop in of him talking about, you know, his take on this knife. Because this one looks a little bit different than some of the other ones I've seen. Some of them are more tapered, much more dagger-like, not quite as broad. I like the broadness of this. Like I said, he had, uh, uh, the, the sheath is period accurate, really nice, hangs. I actually wore this at the show after I bought it. I was just carrying it around the show. So let's take a look. We'll bring up and we'll find the information about the smatch it. And we'll just, we'll, we'll bring that up and maybe I'll just, it'll be story time with Mike. That'll basically what it'll be. So guys, I tried to upload an image of what I'm currently reading. Let me tip this down a little bit. And I could not, it didn't want to upload. So I will read this to you. This is on, if you want to, if you want to check this, this is all on Wikipedia. So the smatch it, the smatch it is a short, heavy fighting sword slash knife or knife slash sword. 16 inches in overall length, including grip, and was designed by William E. Fairbain during World War II. So if you don't know who William Fairbain is, he is the father of combat knife fighting. So uh, it was described in the Office of Strate Strategic Services, the OSS, who are the predecessors to, if you know anything, predecessors to the CIA. It's a cross between a, mas um, a machete and a bolo. It's based on the Royal Welsh Fulcher's trench knife of World War I and is designed as a pure combat knife. Has a broad leaf-shaped blade, sharpened full length on one side and from the tip 
to half the other side. Now, the one that Aaron made is sharp on both sides, and the entire blade is cut it, covered with a dull matte finish to prevent detection at night from stray reflections, which he stayed pretty period authentic or accurate with that. It's, it's kind of matte. It's a pretty matte finish. So according to Fairbane, the Smatchet is an ideal close combat weapon for those not armed with a rifle or bayonet. The psychological reflection of any man when he first takes a Smatchet in his hand is full justifications for its recommendation as a fighting weapon. This is, this is Fairbane speaking to this knife. He will immediately register all the essential qualities of a good soldier. Confidence, determination, aggressiveness, balance, weight, killing power with the point, edge, or pommel combined with an extremely simple training with, with extremely simple training ne necessary to become efficient with its use and make it an ideal for personal weapon for all those not armed with a rifle or bayonet. So basically he said, it'll fuck shit up. <laughs> That's basically what he said. So the Smatchet was used by British and American Special Forces, Special Air Services, and Offices of the Strategic Services during World War II. Like I said, OSS was the, orig uh, was the origin of the uh, CIA, basically. In the late 80s, Colonel Rex Applegate modified a version of the Smatchet in Fairbane designed World War II and called it the Applegate Fairbane Combat Smatchet. So if you know... Um, so... Fairbane was the father of combat knife fighting, like I said before. Uh, Applegate was the grandson of that, if you want to look at it that way. So there's a long period of time, but then Applegate took some of Fairbane's designs and he modified them into combat knives. This is 100% this is a military tool. That's what it was designed for. It's just, you get that heft and you feel it and you're like, wow, this, this, exactly like I said, will fuck some shit up. So, um, there's been several people that have made it. Uh, as you're looking in here, I'm looking at it, you know, since we're on here, may as well. Uh, Applegate, Fairbank, Cold Steel, Wells, uh, so Applegate and Fairbank, Cold Steel, Wells, Creek, Knife, and Gunworks. And then there have been some other ones, um, I think... I forget who else. Oh, we're on the computer. Let's look. Um, there's been a couple people that have made them. Uh, I think there was... Hmm. Let's see. You know how my videos are. So this one is... Uh, this is a Wells Creek. So I'm looking at some of them. They're pretty much all... They pretty much all look like what you're seeing here. A lot of these are more shiny. But uh, yeah, guys, a smatch it is, I mean, I could not think of if I was in a field setting where I needed something just to, just to go to town with and, and I could use it for different stuff. But then to, to be able to still say that this in hand indexes well, you can, you can just, all of it. It's just brutal, brutal, brutal. So, but yeah, I mean, that's. I'm going to turn it around and we'll get a good look at it, but I just, I wanted to talk about it first and I'm going to try and get this video ready and I'll try and load it tonight so that it, it premieres tomorrow. I probably won't be in the comments section of that one, but I just, I really wanted to show you guys this. I really, really love this. The fact that it's, it's got zirconium and, and, and lightning strike carbon fiber in a, in a knife that, that still looks like it was made period accurate like it, may, it looks like it was made in like the world war ii setting it just looks like that it's got that feel and that look and i i just that's i find that amazing i find it attractive that it looks like that so um i will tell you this knife is as much as i love it is not something i'm going to be able to keep I can't, I can't really keep it uh i don't have any need for it i really don't have any place to put it so for those of you guys that follow me on instagram uh you can run over to instagram i will be posting this up as an auction uh, here in the next couple days. And then I have something of mats that I'm gonna try and sell. But we're gonna see, there might be a spot in here where there's a cut in the past, throughout the, in the past part of the video. And we'll see if Aaron has his take on that knife, like his feelings about that knife he made. So um, 
I don't know how you guys like this setup where I'm at in my office, but this is going to happen. Um, live feeds are probably going to happen more like this uh, every once in a while so that while I'm doing interactions and things that I've got this available where I can do work and still do a live feed because uh, I can't always do live feeds while I'm sharpening. So, all right, guys, we'll see. We will see what we will see. There may be some Aaron Frederick in there or there may not. We'll see. So, all right, guys, like I said, quick video. I'll get pictures posted up on Instagram. I'll get a picture posted up uh, and some video of it up close from the reverse camera where we got a good, clear picture of it um, before I end this video. That'll probably be the end of it. But um, So I'm not going to sign off yet. We'll see how that goes. So another step in. Uh, I hate doing this. I hate when I get something partially done, but I, I just don't have time to reshoot the video. I didn't turn the camera around and get any close-ups on that knife. I will... When I do the auction, I will do a whole video where I'm doing the auction. You guys will get to see it from the top and from the, it is, it'll be gorgeous. But so now at this point, um, Aaron, who I really like a lot, Aaron sent me a video that I'm going to throw in describing, like he talks about his thought process. He talks about the, um, the origin and, and the history of the knife in a different way than I did. Aaron is very knowledgeable. He collects World War II memorabilia, and World War II weapons, all that stuff. So after Aaron, I'm gonna put up the end. That's just after Aaron talks, it's the end of the video. So basically right now is my end of the video and here comes Aaron for his part. When you get to the end, Aaron's gonna stop talking. That's gonna be the end of the video. You guys take it easy, take care of yourselves. Don't stop though. There's about five more minutes of video, just five more minutes and that's all you got and then, then you can leave. But you should watch what Aaron says about how, what his thought process was when he made these knives. How are we doing out there, people? Um, they wanted me to do a little video about my mindset on uh, the smatchets that I started making. Um, basically, the concept came from a conversation I had with uh, Hank Greenberg. And he was talking about some of the, the trash panda stuff. And uh, there's a lot of people that do know, but I collect World War II um, stuff, mainly the guns. Uh, but uh, he, we got to talking about making something that was a little different from what I'd normally been making. And uh, the smatchets came up. You know, I know uh, Mick Strider had made them, and Les George has made some uh, and their versions of them. Um, so it got me kind of thinking, and so I basically went on the hunt to find what the smatchets looked like during World War II, and there was two different uh, two different things of them that, that I came across. One of them is almost identical to the one that I've done. The other one was basically the same shape. Um, some of them might have been about an inch to a, two inches longer than this one is, but basically what they were uh, were flat ground or they were done like this but I mean they're exactly what they they sound like they're you know either a machete or a shovel or whatever you can use these for anything um, it's really hard to find a good example of them because apparently they were a very coveted um, weapon or tool in World War II um, it was kind of like having a pistol if you got uh, if you got killed or taken out of action, a lot of times your pistol went to the next guy in the in the line or whatever. But if you got killed and had to smatch it, a lot of times uh, they would uh, they would take your smatch it, and uh, then the next guy would use it. So a lot of them didn't make it home. So it's really hard to find a good example of what the smatches were like. Um, this is kind of how I. I found some pictures and I kind of tried to grind it almost identical and I'm not big on copying anybody's stuff but when I'm trying to make a period piece or something like that uh, that's that's basically what I was doing I was doing everything I could except I was using very modern steels these are 3v um, and uh, g10 or my and then the same along went with the sheath um, I could have went with a Kydex, which is what most of the uh, the big trash pandas and things that I do, they are, they're, they're usually Kydex, but that wasn't really what I was going for. I was going for more of a, a World War II look. So I 
I basically copied the original sheath that they made. Uh, just a big snap sheath, really big loop on this to go on a belt or whatever webbing that was on uh, their, their parachutes or whatever they were using at the time. But that's that's why these are so big and, and it's got a snap and, you know, instead of it uh, having a kydex sheath. Um, I'm not opposed to doing a kydex. It's probably just whatever somebody wants. But um, I didn't doll up the leather on these. I did it almost exactly the way they did. I used a, a good heavy set leather, but uh, that's basically my mindset on uh, on how these came about. Um, the one you're probably going to be looking at uh, is a dolled up version. It's got uh, it's got a high carbon steel so I could get a, a, a nice temper line in it. I used zirconium for the bolster so it was all black. Tried to go on all black knife. It's basically what it is. It's uh, it's 1095 zirconium and then lightning strike carbon fiber. Um, same basic shape, same same grind and things. It's still got the old look and the old grind of the old smatchets, but that one is uh, kind of dolled up. Probably be uh, one of a kind on the way I do it. I may do some more 1095, but I probably won't do Zerk and lightning strike and things. That was kind of a special TKI knife that I did uh, to have something special on my table for the TKI. Um, but uh, thanks for uh, having me on your uh, your show here. And uh, if there's anything anybody uh, needs or has a question about, uh, just hit me up on Instagram. It's under Frederick Knives on Instagram or under my uh, YouTube page as well. It's uh, Trash Panda Knives slash Frederick Knives. And thanks a lot. Everybody have a great day.